It's been 14 months since the shocking death of Thomas Kelly, the 18-year-old who was king hit and killed on his first night in Sydney's King's Cross. His death sparked outrage across the country about how alcohol fueled violence has spiralled out of control. It's a crisis, and one the Kelly family is determined to solve. This week, they're launching a foundation in Thomas's name, hoping to spare other families from their grief. A picture of innocence. Thomas Kelly's last few moments alive before he was attacked. He came off that wall there, wasn't he? I'm retracing Thomas's final steps with his parents, Kathy and Ralph. So the last vision we had of Thomas alive was from that CCTV camera on the corner of the McCure. And he was walking along holding his He was walk, walking hand. along here asking for directions because they had no idea where they were going to. And literally, he was attacked here in this position and he was going to the Trademark Hotel, what's that, 40 metres across the road. He was so close but so far. It was 10 p.m. on the 7th of July last year when another teenager, Kieran Loveridge, who had been drinking heavily, came from the shadows and King hit Thomas. He never woke up. Such mindless violence and it keeps happening. Thomas isn't the first and he won't be the last. No. And there's going to be another family like us who had an innocent child that wasn't provoked or, or doing anything wrong that, you know, will end up like us. And that's just not good enough. Thomas Kelly is perhaps the highest profile victim of this war on our streets that's waged every weekend by young, drunk Australians. Seventy thousand victims a year of alcohol fuel violence nationally. Three and a half thousand brain injuries. The Auditor General released on the 6th of August a report that showed in New South Wales alone the cost of alcohol abuse is $3.87 billion. And those figures are mind-boggling. Everybody is saying we need to do something, we need to make change, we need to rethink what we're doing. We need, as parents, as educators, as a community, we need to come together and actually stop this. That's why Ralph and Kathy are launching the Thomas Kelly Youth Foundation this week to fund more surveillance cameras and safe zones in areas like King's Cross. They're also pushing for an honest review of liquor laws and late trading hours. When Cathy and I had received that call that Saturday night to come up from Barrel to go to St Vincent's and we arrived onto William Street and there was a sea of people walking up at half past 12 in the morning towards King's Cross. And if you could freeze that frame and all that picture, then that's where the problem is. Is a lot of these people arrive intoxicated, they can't get into the venues because they, are, they won't get in because they're intoxicated. And so you have a problem straight, straight away. away. They do what Kieran Loveridge did. They go around and throw punches. Yes. Loveridge has pleaded guilty to four other assaults that night, as well as to the manslaughter of Thomas. He'll be sentenced in October. But the Kelly family fear they will never see proper justice. You know, maybe you'd feel differently if there was some remorse, but there isn't any. And that's really sad. I don't know how anybody could take another person's life and not at some point say they were sorry. 14 months ago, you said you hated the person who did this. Do you still feel like that? From my perspective, I don't think about him. I just put him completely out of my mind. I, it would destroy you if you did. I don't know. I still hate him. You know, we saw him in court for the first time the other day and took every ounce of energy not to fall off the chair, you know, because um, he just looked like a normal young man about the same age as Thomas and I just don't know what makes people go out and do something like that. Thomas Kelly had his whole life ahead of him. A new girlfriend, a new job. But in a split second, a punch from a drunken thug took it all away. It could have been anyone's son, 
And that's why the Kellys are saying no more. Why are you fighting so hard? We're fighting for our own children. We have two younger children. Yeah. We want them to be able to go out, you know, and Madeline's just turned 18 and she wants a life. She wants to go out and have fun with her friends. She doesn't want to be the one that has to sit at home because her brother died like this. But we want Thomas's senseless death to mean something, to not have died at 18 for no reason at all. 